Yes, that's the uh, very famous song from the Brave Little Toaster. Yes. And that's the subject of our conversation today. We're doing a slightly different series. This is a series of uh, rides that we would like to see. In other words, rides that we sit around talking about, fantasizing about, and uh, but we'll probably never see the light of day. I think it should, though. Sure. And this is my favorite one. This is the Brave Little Toaster. Um, and we got this ideal back probably, what, 10 years ago, 12 years ago? Long time. So my ideal for it would be, my ideal for it would be, because we were talking about should it be a roller coaster? Should it be a dark ride? Would it be like a, a kid's ride, sort of like Winnie the Pooh or something? Or would it be more of an adult ride, you know, like... Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean or something like that and my my thought for it would be would it be would be one of these new um, motion simulator type uh, sort of roller coasters where you, you're in a you're in a single like, unit on a large claw arm so where they can actually move you around you're actually getting the movement you can go through some uh, physical scenes and then you can add in all the all the uh, 3D effects and the uh, and the visual effects, and um, so it would be sort of like, in my mind, sort of like uh, the Harry Potter ride at uh, at Universal, where they have where they involve all the senses, and they could do it in a much more realistic way. It's Disney, and they pioneer all kinds of new technology, so they could certainly do something even better than the Harry Potter ride, which is part roller coaster, part simulated ride and that's kind of what I'm saying for this what do you think when we first were designing the actual track and ride vehicle system we couldn't we, Harry Potter wasn't even someone's idea yet I don't even know if the movies had started being made oh, no, yet no. yeah when we had first come up with the idea um, years and years and years and years ago um, after our first Disney trips when we first came up with the idea so that was like 2002 I yeah. think came up with a whole 11 years ago storyline and um, it, it basically, when we had come up with it, the ride vehicles, like I said, Harry Potter hadn't existed. So ride vehicles like you'd find in that attraction were non-existent. Right, and we, we were had, trying to figure out how in the world could you make this work because of the different uh, types of movement that you need to get. It's not exactly a roller coaster. It wouldn't exactly be a dark ride. You could kind of start it out as a dark ride, but then there were a couple of things we wanted to do that wouldn't have been possible with the technology as we knew it then. Harry Potter uses. So let's walk through the whole the whole storyline of the okay. ride and how, how that would go. Uh, this is exactly in the order as you would view it from beginning to end is how we're going to walk down this. So we start off, we're in the cabin, the boys, the, uh, the well, little let's, boys let's family's start gone. from the outside. Um, well that's what I, I'm, I'm actually thinking, okay the outside of the ride could, could be themed uh, as the cabin, the cabin yes. in the woods. You'd walk up, it would be the large cabin, it would be the cabin like you see with a for sale sign sticking out front of it and then you'd walk inside and then your queue would be long and winding as Disney likes to make them yeah so you'd have all the scenes you could have all the scenes from their cleaning the house getting ready uh, uh, talking to you know all the their, I think the last the about um, air conditioner should be air a, conditioner on the wall that's the pre-show room the the room before you get on your actual ride would be where you're standing there and you're talking to air conditioner. It could be one of their animatronics similar to... Uh, uh, Mr. Potato Head nowadays. Yeah, Mr. Potato better. Head, yeah, it would be a good comparison. Or you could think of like Crush or any of the others where you're in a room and you're interacting with a character that they have Even there. if it wasn't fully interactive. No, it wouldn't have to be fully interactive because the lines are preset. And he's going to tell you, you know, oh, he's not coming back. Uh, and, and then he's going to have his... Basically, the speech that he makes in the movie is what you'd hear him making while you're in the little pre-show part of it. I even thought about maybe just doing the entire scene. Right, you could have, have the other you could have Lampy the other there side of your and Toaster doing their lines. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, of course, Air Conditioner is bigger than all of them, so he looms over, over you. I think that would be a great just to have him really big so you feel like you're one of the characters. As you're going through the queue, you're being shrunk down. Just like you do when you go into the Tree of Life, you're being shrunk to the size of an ant. 
when you're going into this, you're being shrunk to the size of a household appliance. Right. So you look over to your right, and Lampy is not a foot tall. He is your height, or yeah. slightly small, slightly yeah, he's shorter. He's probably going to be about four foot. And and, uh, and toaster is, is going to be you know a, a toaster the size of a small person. So. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, uh, vacuum cleaner would be the largest character of yeah. those. And so you have you have air conditioner on the wall, his little grill, uh, because they've got this now technology, the movable lips for Mr. Potato, Mr. Potato, Potato Head. Head. That's why I first thought of it that. It would be perfect for air conditioners, grill, so he can make his and mouth. And the eyeballs and he can, are the digital eyes yeah. like you use on Mr. Potato Head so, And then he can have his, uh, his breakdown moment. That's when the lights go down. You know, because you're always in the Disney attractions, you have the little moment when the lights go down, and then the guy says, okay, now you can move on to your ride vehicles. That's the perfect moment. He has his breakdown. Uh, you know, oh, no, he's going to blow. And he blows. The lights go off. And then the, the, the entry to the uh, door lights come on, and, and you're directed to get on your ride vehicle. And then the ride vehicle itself, um, I thought about this a couple of times. And... Over the different designs and shapes and looks of the ride vehicle that you could have, the one I keep going back to is it has to be something that relates to the movie in some way. And so what you're left with is either uh, a chair that they wrote on, which wouldn't really work. There's a whole bunch of office chairs lined up. I mean, I guess you could make it work, but... Um, or... The buggy that they rode in. Yeah, in I, I was city. thinking the grocery buggy. Maybe, maybe well, it was like actually that. a baby buggy. Oh, a baby buggy. But a grocery buggy would work. I mean, it doesn't have to be the exact thing that they but rode I mean, in. But I just kept characters. going going back to using um, more of a of a, um, a junker car look to it. Yeah. Is yeah. one I kept going back to. I don't know if it would fit or not, but it could work. Especially with the finale. Right. That would work. That, that would. You could just be writing in. I, I'm thinking, here's something that they could try with it. It, it could just be sort of a standard Omnimover type vehicle. Um, but as you pull up, there are lights shining on it, which gives it the overlay. Remember, just like they do with the castle and, and a lot of other things, where it's just a black background. But whatever light they shine on it is going to give it the appearance of being whatever uh, they want it to be so if it's a black car with maybe some wheels on it it can be a baby buggy when you first get in it and then later it's a junker car but it's the same vehicle it's just how they're lighting it uh, and how you'll see reflections of it at various points uh mirrors or, or whatever on the wall where you'll see the vehicle you're riding in is yeah. whatever vehicle they want it to be so they can create that illusion in your mind that you're riding in uh, a baby buggy or a grocery cart or a junker car yeah um, and what I would do is in front because remember they were being pulled by vacuum cleaner yeah. so have vacuum cleaner built at the front of this thing vacuum clean so as you're riding Kirby. he's pulling you Kirby yeah. is um, and then like each each vehicle of course would have their own Kirby so you would only load one but it's an Omni mover so it's a continuous load type thing mm -hmm. But so, th so that's your scene. You start to drive. You're driving away. Of course, you're going through the countryside. You're on your way um, to go find the boy. So then the next scene is. Um, well, the next, uh, the next, uh, what I would call action scene is uh, Blanky being carried away by the wind. So as you're going through the woods or whatever, you could, you know, you could get the wind effect going on. Maybe some lightning and uh, see Blanky fluttering through the sky. Yep. Blanky! And then, uh... And, you know, uh, the, uh, the part where Lampy gets struck by lightning. Yeah. That, that would be a great shot. There. So, there's your opportunity for lots of movement, of thrashing around of the vehicle. So, if you are in a vehicle like the it, dinosaur ride... It's uh, a great one, because it's... You can skew storm. from side to side and get tossed around quite a bit. Uh, or if you were on the arm, either way, they could they could uh, really make it feel as if you're being tossed around by a storm and going through various adventures, trying to chase Blanky down, catch Blanky, and uh, all the rest. So at the end, you're going to end up in a in a muddle, in a mess at some point. You're going to crash, boom. Um, and of course, after the big crash, boom, scary scene, uh, you know, it then opens up, and then you're in this wonderful little meadow. 
And then you have the scene where they're, they're frolicking with the, the animals, the butterflies, the frogs. You hear the, uh, whatever those plant things are that make the drumming noise. <laughs> the, uh, cat of nine tails. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then you hear the little do 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 you know, little musical play that, that they do in that scene. That would be a good scene to cue the music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then... And then what? <laughs> and then the guy's got to find you, right? So th you create the scene where he's going to find you. So they were in a in a pile of mud, yeah. in a mud puddle. Yeah, so. they'd been driving through um, the woods and whatnot, and then they got to a, a real thick section. And, and that wouldn't be that hard to produce a, an effect because whether you're in a wheeled vehicle or on the other vehicle, all you have to do is decrease speed uh, and maybe create some friction feeling under the wheels, something along that line. Uh, and then, uh, but the end, end, the end product, of course, is that you have to be stopped for a moment so that the guy can find you. So you're in mud. I would have it be that, you know, the others were sunk in the mud, and uh, here was your ride vehicle sort of sitting on the top of the mud just starting to sink. Now, wouldn't that be an easy feeling to give to someone because all you have to do is lower the hydraulics a little and oops, we're sinking. So there you have the, uh, you have the visual of the mud and then uh, you lower the hydraulics and, and you, you sunk down just a little into the mud. And just when you think, oh no, we're sinking into the mud, uh, along comes the guy to find you. And this is my ideal that I thought of for how to do this. It, you, might, you might give your um, ideal afterwards. What I was thinking was if you had a convex uh, ceiling, a sort of round, semicircle, dome-ish uh, ceiling coming down into the room, uh, and then that is the surface that you play your video of the face of the guy on. So it actually looks like his face is coming down toward you, and then he can speak his lines about, oh, what's this? You know, I found and, and pull, pull you out. And then, of course, you get that, that brief flying, right? It's going to lift you up. That's uh, your first taste of the flying experience of the ride because you're going to go straight up rather rapidly because he's grabbing, he's grabbing uh, radio's antenna and pulling you all up out of, out of the muck. Yeah. And so the next scene would be uh, at their shop. Of course. The, the scene, you know. I, I think this would be probably the one of two scenes that we have in mind that would sell the ride, that would make everybody say, you got to go on this ride. Yes. Who doesn't love that scene from the Brave Little Toaster with all the the uh, Frankensteinian uh, appliances. appliances? Yeah, in in his little uh, repair shop and telling their story and it, they're sort of a, it's reminiscent of the old B movies um, uh, horror movies from the 1950s. Yeah, and it would just be a great thing to just sit there and um, listen to that, see that going on all around you, get involved in it, and just sit there. I mean, they could spin you from one wall, so you're seeing one character singing, there's the next one sings, it'll spin you around to look at the other wall. And that, I mean, it's a great use of room, too, because they only need one room to produce this, because it was, it was acted out in one room, in the movie. Um, so you see characters coming out of the oven and, and hanging down from the ceiling, just yep. like, I mean, you could literally do that exact scene from the movie, and you're standing in the middle of it with uh, Toaster and Blanky and, and uh, Kirby, uh, seeing all these crazy mishmash characters. Wouldn't it be great if they could get Joan Rivers to voice the voice again? Um, <laughs> something's going on on the computer. <laughs> and, and just... Um, play out the, the great scene. From I just love that scene so much. I mean, it's it. an excellent scene. Obviously with this entire attraction, as many of the original voices as possible would be great to have in it, obviously, because there's oh, yeah. a f quite a few recognizable voices oh, yeah. in it. So. They could replace Toaster's voice and it wouldn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, what, and Air Conditioner, they would kind of have to replace uh, his, because... Uh, was Christian Slater doing uh, Jack Nicholson? Oh, I w no, it was... Um, no, oh, it was no, it wasn't. Christian no, it wasn't. Slater. That's a different, that's a different that's one. That's a different thing entirely. Yeah, something with something else. No, um, it was, uh, I can't remember his name now. 
he's not around anymore. That's the important part. Yeah, that's the so important he part. Can't, so he can't do the voice They have to anymore. get a voice imitator for him, but... But he's one that's imitatable enough, and he was doing an imitation in it, so... Radio needs to be... John Lovitz. Needs to be John Lovitz. Contact him, however you have to, <laughs> put him to do that voice. That voice. Yeah. In the sequels, when they removed his voice and used someone it else... It was very evident. It was obvious. And it wasn't as good. So, okay, you had the great scene with the, uh, with the rope, with the repair shop. They make their escape. Yep. Move on Through out the to the next... the big wall in the, the big hole in the wall. Which is just perfect, because how easy is... We already know they can create the hole in the wall effect from the Great Muppet, uh, okay. We make great Muppet great Caper, Muppet which is actually paper. the, the 3D Muppets spectacular. 3D show, yes. Yes, and, uh, they do such a great job there where they have the, uh, the gun going off, creates explosion, rocks fall from the ceiling, and, I mean, not rocks, um... Uh, bricks. bricks and uh, plaster effect, and then boom, there's a hole in the wall. Yep. So they could do it the exact same way. The hole was there all along. Uh, from there, they're heading into the city because now they know where they're going. They're going to go to the city, um, which basically leads you into a section where you'll be going to his apartment or his mother's apartment, right. where they show up at his apartment. And they're introduced to all the appliances he has now, all the new technology, all the new modern conveniences, which of course they're not. <laughs> and so then they're just flaunting it in front of them. And so we just have that going on in the background. You know, you have him sitting there doing that, you know, you know more, more, more. The computer, the computer, that's the, yeah, that's the big one. Yep. Now you can do the computer effects too, and I picture that part where, where the computer is singing uh, and you tell them, you know, everything you wanted and more. Um, having the room lit and designed sort of like the interior of um, Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin uh, with the sort of uh, cartoonish 2D, 3D combination um, design and the gay glow paint because it, uh, it's supposed to be inside of a robot. So that would be kind of a cool effect to use to make it look like they were inside the robot was, I mean not the robot, I keep saying robot, the computer is generating this, this scene for them and yeah. was the other scene menacingly around them. So uh, of course the other characters, the, the funky lamp and the other ones should be, I think, should be s small animatronics uh, yeah. spaced around the room in amongst the computerized effects. LEDs to CRTs, Wolfers, Tweeters, and Tether Trees, and Ultra Nine Life of Ease. Everything you get up on the edge. And more. And more. <laughs> yes. Following that big section is another segue to remind you that that's what he's doing. He's gotten back to the apartment. They're not there. Now he's got to find new appliances, which leads you to being kicked out of the apartment, chucked into a bin. And sent to the next main scene where your finale will take place, which is at the junkyard. Junkyard, yes. Yes. I think this is the one that people will talk about to their friends, if this ever really existed, of course. But this would really get people talking. Uh, you, you would please the teenage writer, you know, the thrill seeker writer, as well as uh, fans of the movie, you know, adults, kids. And that, I mean, the whole junkyard scene, uh, you're traveling along a conveyor belt at one point, and the big giant magnet is coming down from, to get you the, with the, the evil menacing uh, facial expression on it. Um, as you're traveling along this conveyor belt, it's picking up cars and dropping them in the cruncher. And you, you, get, you get that bass so they can be playing the bass through their, their speakers of the, the sound of the, the equipment. Doom, doom, you can imagine how, how that would add a sense of menacing and dread to the scene. And in the, the background, whole, the whole time you're going, you can see the thing picking them up, dropping them in the background. The lighting so would have changed. What's coming on. It's a, it's a dark lighting in this room. Uh, but not yeah, it's, it's not out, like uh, nighttime, outside. but dark in a sense of how they're lighting things up, uh, making them look 
spooky it's uh, supposed to be menacing. Like six in the afternoon. They can the use place. a lot of reds and, and other colors that provide menace. And you know, the sky is blue, but oh. the scene is, <coughs> is dark and, and kind of spooky. And piled up around you is piles of trash and stacks and stacks of uh, old, old broken down, broke down cars. And wouldn't that be great? Because you could see that it, with the ones close to you are going to be real. Uh, and this is kind of like they did in cars where uh, they have real cars built there. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then that, of course, because this is supposed to be like, you know, a miles of, of towers of crushed cars, uh, the walls would generate the 3D effect uh, of there being, you know, miles of these cars. Uh, but the ones that are close to you are real, so you could really, you know, almost reach out and touch them. Uh, see the real cars that are crushed up and damaged. And here's a great opportunity for the fire effect to come in, um, sparks, spark effect to come in, because all, the, all this equipment is going on. Cars are being crunched, they're being burnt, they're being, you know, uh, cut down to smaller. So you can see a, a whirring, buzzing uh, buzzsaw going on off to one side, maybe cutting a car in half. That'd be a great effect to see, uh, a physical effect as you're rolling along through this thing, as you're going on the, uh, on the, to, you know, you're trying to hide, so you're going from one spot to another, and then eventually, of course, the magnet is going to, it's going to catch you. Yeah, it's going to follow you around and then catch you. So you hear the mmm, mmm, and, and you're and seeing you it over, it a shadow over is coming head. over you, shadow, shadow, and then you see it itself, and then, and then it latches on, and the whole car would shake when, when this thing latches on. It really give you that effect that you've been caught, and then you, you'll get the flying sensation as you're picked up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're dropped doof, onto the conveyor belt. So now we're once again rolling, um, but the, the effect is you're on a conveyor belt being pulled toward the giant crunching machine, which you can see in yes. front of you, getting ready to crunch you. Uh, and then this section would be similar to the whole the whole section. The way I feel it being set up is set up similar to how Test Track was yeah. originally set up. Yeah. Where you would turn the corner, you would see the car running into the concrete barrier being crushed, and then you turn another corner, and now you're lined up with another concrete barrier. And so it would be a similar scenario. You see in, in the background, you see these cars getting crushed up. Now you're facing one of the, the crusher, you know, <laughs> and it's like, uh oh. I know what's been happening to those cars after it goes through this thing. I don't want to be through it now. And yeah, so now and you're it, lined up heading toward it as the big finale closes down. It, it very much reminds me also of like the end of Dinosaur or the one Indiana Jones ride on, where the last scene is the, the giant dinosaur is over you, about to eat you, and then you go under, and it just misses. Yeah. Uh, so it's that same kind of experience where you're coming to it, you know, you feel the sense of dread, your heart starts pounding faster, it's huge, it's looming, your death is about to get you, and then you just escape. Yeah. So that's uh, and so you get that sort of roller coaster sensation, uh, speed, uh, and then of course you're delivered, thankfully, and there is master, and yay, everybody's uh, reunited. And then you sort of you sort of slowly slip out of their world, and you see them just in a group over to one side, cheering and celebrating because you did it. And uh, you know, if you want to have a ride photo, there's the time opportunity for you to show it off there. Hey, look at you! You survived it. Here's proof. Blah blah blah. I don't know. I kind of think the ride photo would be awesome to get while you're up there about to be just as it's about to crush you. Well, that's the what I meant. That's where they would show oh, it to oh, you. Oh, yes, they would show it you to know, you. Like yes, a lot of them, they'll see. show it to you at the vast, last second of the ride. Yeah. There's of a, them all monitor there's a screen, displaying yeah, it. You can say, oh, there we are. Yeah. And then, of course, you unload and uh, head back out into the real world. Yeah. And you would exit out into, of course, the gift shop. And, you know, I, I think this would be, this is an opportunity Disney's really missing because Brave Little Toaster has only gotten more popular with time. It has a huge following now, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of fans. There is not much merchandising at all for Brave Little Toaster, and it's a huge opportunity they're missing. There are no tie-ins. There's never been. Uh, there's never been a TV series. There's never been any cuddly toys. Um, and here's a great chance then uh, for people to find the things that they've always wanted to buy but that, with Brave Little Toaster that you can't find anywhere because. It hasn't been uh, utilized in any other way except the movies. So they exit out the ride. There's the gift shop. You could get, you know, 
a pillow shaped like a toaster. You could get an actual lampy lamp. Um, you know, of course, the usual, you know, T-shirts and hats and uh, keychains, uh, posters and that sort of thing. Now, the question is, where would you stick it? <laughs> um, uh, would be in uh, Tomorrowland. I, 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 I have always... I think been... over there by Pixar Place would be a great place for it. It fits into, even though it's not Pixar, it fits into that style and theming very well. Yeah, and Universal it, needs more... Kids Hollywood Studios, actually. Stuff. Hollywood Studios. I keep saying Universal. Uh, I was thinking probably Universal over doesn't in the need animation anymore. courtyard. Uh, There's animation courtyard. Yes, when that's they have an animation uh, studio and all that other yeah, stuff. Yeah, and uh, again in uh, Univers uh, Hollywood, Hollywood Studios. Studios. You know, just take out that little little mermaid attraction. We don't need another another one. Yeah. You know, you just put in a new one over. Put it in in place of that stupid uh, the, the Narnia or whatever they keep sticking in there, which is always so lame. So, but the reason trying to sell it whatever their small. latest movie is in a, in a sad way. So. But, yeah. but this ride has the potential to seem big but take up small space True. if you use the ride technology that we were talking about. So in other words, somewhere between Pixar Play or Pixar Studios, Pixar Place, whichever you call it, and the animated animated courtyard, somewhere in that chunk of space, that's where you can stick it. And it fit you in. would definitely need to fast pass that ride. I think. It would definitely. Uh, be it would a be fast way popular, one. and the, and it would I think not be able to carry enough people at one time if you made it small the way we were describing if you made it as a, a giant traditional ride uh yeah of course it, it would have a large capacity i i think again i think it, it makes a, a nice addition to pixar's style yeah uh, of movies and, and it does have a, a slight pixar connection john lasseter was originally in, uh, yeah. involved with oh, it there you go that's probably why before it actually was realized so a very small connection there so I think they'll do it on the Brave Little Toaster story. We figured out what it will be, where it'll go. So if you agree with us, let us know. Uh, if you have ideals of your own, uh, send them to us. Uh, make your own video or, or blog and uh, let us know. And uh, well, join us next time when we talk about something.